Hello everyone. Uh, this video has a certain kind of finality to it. It is, after all, the last time I'm driving home from work with the World Cup still being on. And yeah, it's my last personal preview of a game. Not that I made that many for this World Cup. Uh, simple reason is I really saved this for the last few games where you know you can concentrate. If I would make preview videos for every single game, especially in the group stage, that would be crazy. And you got a little bit of preview in my reviews, uh, so to speak. No, uh, of course we're going to talk about the final now. Uh, while I have some time today, traffic will be light. Friday is always nice to drive home, especially if you wait a little bit. The World Cup final, uh, France against Croatia. I still don't believe it quite. Um, it's, you know, the traditionalist in me says, what, the, what does Croatia have to do in a final? And to a lesser degree, France. And France only made it to two finals themselves so far. But thinking about it, this is exactly what you need at the World Cup. You need. Uh, to expand the field a little bit and expand they did. Uh, Croatia reaching the final uh, is probably one of the best things that could have happened to the to soccer. Um, since I'm wearing the England jersey, yes, uh, if I think about the possible jersey matchup or kit matchup, jer jersey matchup I find, but the kit matchup, uh, including pants and socks, I probably would have liked uh, France England better because I'm Pretty certain that we would have gotten a really nice um, matchup shirt wise and pants wise with the France playing in traditional colors and England also playing in the traditional kit. Um, although you never know if FIFA would have forced them into mono white and then uh, blue with potentially red socks. So if, uh, if you look at, so there's a little bit of a sad eye for that, but other than that, I really like this matchup um, and I like the fact that a small nation like Croatia made it to the final uh, it's not that they are the huge outsiders like Greece were in 2004 but I would put them up there with Denmark uh, in 92 uh, that Denmark team um, had some really good players in especially Brian Laudrup was probably uh, was a star at that time and had then other quite good players that, um, you know, deserved being there. Um, now we have Luka Modric, I would say Rakitic, so I mean, there are two really good players and with Mandzukic, you have a player that who scored already in two Champions League finals. So yeah, maybe there's even more star power on this Croatia team than on the Denmark team. Um, I have a feeling that the Denmark team back then was a little bit more of a cohesive unit. Uh, it's not that one part of the team dropped off so much uh, talking about the team of Croatia it always feels like the offense and the midfield are outstanding and then the defense kind of drops off a little bit but I haven't really seen this at this tournament especially the goalkeeper I mean he won them two penalty shootouts and the one where he saved three from Denmark that's a big achievement in itself so uh, yeah as I said, I will put them somewhere with Denmark to uh, around this magnitude, not Greece. I mean, Greece was really, 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 really unexpected. I think who would, I think if Japan would have made it, that would be a little bit like Greece. But on the other side, Japan plays a much more progressive forward moving style than Greece's solid uh, ultra defensive approach. Jersey matchup. Uh, I will talk about it in a special. Nah, pro pro probably I won't. I will. Uh, I will put it in the preview because um, I thought I will review uh, the semifinal matchups and predictions together with the final. So kind of put it all together because it it would be too short of a video in the way. And I'm not sure how reasonable those are. In anyway, I, th I think I should have put it all in match. Uh, review, but you know, let, let me know what you thought about these videos. I, for my part, I find them a little bit um, superfluous, to be honest. Um, but I will do one after the final. 
uh, the matchup that I expect. Um, while I really would like to see France play in their traditional um, getup, I think they will be playing uh, with blue pants and probably also with blue socks, which doesn't look too well. But I, while I can see them wear red socks, this would mean that Croatia would have to wear blue socks, and I don't think FIFA will like that so much. Um, Croatia plays with their checkered red white checkers uh, kit. They will uh, use white pants with that, so there go the white pants for France. Um, and they usually, I think they were usually playing with blue socks, but of late they also played with red socks. I, I should have checked the Croatia-Nigeria game at this World Cup, because this will be the biggest indication of how we can expect the teams to be playing on Sunday. As I said, I actually, if you would ask me at the moment, I would say an all blue France against Croatia uh, with probably red socks. If Croatia plays in uh, white pants and white socks, uh, then I can see France having uh, red pants. Uh, red socks, not red pants. Um, yeah, I'd rather see France with red socks than with blue socks. I think the all blue was okay, but. I had actually, to make it fit with the jersey on top, it should be the li a lighter blue, my personal opinion. But yeah, that's uh, how I see them playing. I'm actually quite happy that we don't see the Croatia away. So, you know, I think I'll take France in all blue over the all dark kit from Croatia. And then again, FIFA might throw in a little wrench and we'll see France in all white against Croatia in all dark. Please, no. I really hope this is not what's going to happen. Uh, if I would expect from me a rant of epic proportions, um, and I don't want to do that. Now, as for the game, I honestly don't know what to say anymore because it would sound very similar to what I said ahead of Croatia versus England, except for the fact that France is even more is more dominant than England. Um, so, my gut feeling tells me that this is France's to lose. Um, Croatia really has played a whole game longer. They had three overtimes, that's three times 30 minutes, uh, make 90 minutes, so they, have an ex they actually played an extra game. Uh, and uh, they didn't get any rest really in between, so they must be physically done. The reaching the final against England was a question of poor will, pure will, and nothing else. Um, if it was a level playing field at the beginning of the tournament, and both squads meet for the first time, maybe even all the, all the beginning, say round of 16, when they both had to play and they give them even the rest or whatever. I probably would say it would be a lot closer because I still rate the Croatian midfield as the best in the World Cup. Uh, and for the first time they, they have shown what they can do against England when they really took control over the middle of the field. Uh, somewhere at the yeah, 60th minute, somewhere there, you really could feel that now this midfield is in play. Now France, I don't think will allow that. Uh, France might not control possession, but they will control um, the space and they will control the space that's available to this midfield and will make everything tight and try to use the strength of their biggest weapon, which is Kylian Mbappé. Um, as simple as that. I expect a very similar game plan to what they did against um, Croatia. While I wish they would do it, I don't see them doing what uh, Spain did to Italy in the Euro 2012 final. Where Spain was actually, you know, everyone was talking about how Spain is stumbling through the tournament, passing everyone to death, using the tiki taka as a defensive approach of just boring passing around. And then they just destroyed Italy in the final. Um, this first half was some of the best Spanish soccer that you've ever seen. Uh, full disclosure, I was an Italy fan, I am still an Italy fan, so I was actually hoping that Italy can do something, but this was one of the most impressive 45 minutes 
of Spanish soccer that you have that I've seen. Um, probably the Italy team was also a little bit tired, but I think the difference that we have now between France and Croatia is almost unprecedented. So, um, having said all that, I really expect France to win this one. Uh, as I said, it's theirs to lose, and on a normal day, France will completely take control over Croatia, and they don't even need to run up the score much because France has the ability to kill off a game. They, uh, the way they didn't let Belgium back into the game, uh, was super impressive, and what the French team has. In, also in their favor as compared to England is that they have so highly skilled players that can get out of very tricky situations. Yes, the defense might be shaky, but I think Croatia's is a little bit shakier. Um, I honestly don't even see this going to overtime uh, because France will find a spot and whether it's Mbappé running through uh, the Croatian defense or just Griezmann and Matuidi and whoever uh, Pogba who by the way played against Belgium that was the first time I really saw a dominant Pogba uh, yes I don't watch as much club clubs again most of Pogba that I've seen was at the Euros in 16 and now the, this World Cup this was the first time that I really saw that Pogba is uh, is the dominant player that everyone at Juventus always claimed that he is uh, really impressive and if Pogba is in that form I think even Rakitic and Modric might get shaky uh, I, again I don't see a big tactical battle here because both coaches I think are more man managers that uh, rely on motivation I think Deschamps has shown that he has a little bit more flexibility in him the big question of course will be uh, can he use the don't want to call it failure but the disappointment of losing the Euro final at home can he use this to their advantage and actually have uh, uh, remind the players to really still keep playing winning against Belgium was not the final and maybe it was a good thing it was only Belgium and not Brazil that they beat uh, because despite Belgium having a great generation of players it is not Brazil kind you will not mistake uh, France versus Belgium to be the final it's not that different from France against Croatia um, the talent level is similar and maybe the excitement around Belgium is a lot bigger uh, I would say uh, you know a little bit more Belgian players because pretty much all of them play somewhere in either the Premier League area or wherever uh, some Croatian players play in a little bit more obscure Eastern European leagues uh, or you know some more obscure le leagues around but then you have the Rakitic Modric Barcelona Madrid axis and that's also I mean, should remind everyone that Croatia is not uh, not to be underestimated for sure but again it is France's to lose uh, and I would not be surprised if France you know gets an early even gets even early it maybe comes even out gets one or two goals and then just uh, kills the game off and saves it this is the one big thing that you have to give Deschamps credit for it's not excited exciting at all but the ability of this French team to control a game is pretty impressive. Uh, they did so against Uruguay. It always took them a little bit. Let's see, let's feel the opponent out. And maybe that's why I'm saying uh, they will not start from the beginning. Although uh, Mbappé always tries at the beginning to do something. In every game uh, since the round 16, he's trying to do something like, like, like that. He even got the early lead for France against Argentina. But it's very often that they sit back, let the opponent come and figure them out how they play and then kill them off. Make a goal, maybe make even a second goal and then it's all over. Uh, so I think as opposed to the third place playoff, it won't be that exciting of a game. But you know, it's the World Cup final, it's the biggest game. Um, I 
can see that Croatia will probably give the, give the fight of their lives. Um, I just can't see them dom dominating so much. But you know, they've proven me wrong before and I don't. Uh, this time I made myself wrong. I won't write them off. It's just very, very, very hard to see. And even at full strength, France would get the nod here. Um, I said it ahead of the semi-final that if uh, Croatia would play France, ah, Croatia would play England under normal conditions, uh, not having played two overtimes, I would give Croatia the nod. They would be, uh, for me, favored over England. Um, that's not true for France. Uh, France is the most talented squad, the most, most expensive squad. They uh, pack so much punch in there and they keep it restrained, which is maybe for the purist uh, is the sad part, but then, you know, if you want to win something, you got to be use your forces sparingly over a uh, four four weeks with seven games you better get it together now the last thing that we can talk about is uh, the referee which is the Argentinian referee uh, what was uh, his name escapes me now I, I was so prepared for that I'm sorry but it's the Argentinian referee that already uh, refereed the quarterfinal between France and Uruguay uh, and as much as I railed against that one, nah, I didn't really, uh, really get, but it, it surprised me that, you know, you just had our eliminated Argentina and now you uh, are in charge of the lead of the game for France. Uh, didn't sit well, but then yeah, at least there was a rivalry. I think that guy actually uh, was one of the two best referees at the tournament, the other one being, I think, Brian Koypas. Who is the uh, ofi the fourth official? Which is interesting in the sense that you know, if the referee has um, an injury, then uh, you have the second best referee of the World Cup ready to uh, take charge of the game. Um, interesting decision. I'm sure the Kuipers is not the happiest one, but yeah, I think both of those are not a wrong uh, choice in any way. I think they both were really great referees. Maybe it's a bad sign for France because when they had to play Italy in the 2006 final, that was uh, also an Argentinian referee uh, who sent off Zidane in his last game, deservedly, we have to add. Uh, and I think Elizondo back then also was the referee of the opening game, and this is the same thing. I think Pitana, I hope I'm right now. Uh, he also had the opening game and now he gets the final uh, Argentinian specialty so at least one Argentinian made it to the final and I guess uh, so many eulogies have been written about Argentina that this was their last chance and da 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 I read something similar already four years ago maybe not as doomsday -ish as this year um, but yeah at least refereeing wise they are on top of the game so yeah and I understand also that you have a uh, non-European referee because you know making an all-European affair that wouldn't sit right either with many I really think it's better to have um, a referee from outside I mean the last time the first time France won it was a Moroccan referee uh, and now Argentinian referee and another Argentinian refer referee I think it makes a whole lot of sense to have it that way yeah I am looking forward to this final even though I don't expect it to be a good game um, I don't expect it to go into overtime the one wish I have is that both teams get to score maybe even that Croatia gets an early score and that France has to turn it around um, I usually many people say it's better if the underdog makes the first goal um, I typically disagree uh, because the underdog already has a defensive tactic and if now the favor, uh, favorite falls behind uh, they get even more defensive um, but in this case I don't see Croatia being the more defensive team so they, uh, that case I'm, uh, I'm okay let the underdog 
If Croatia scores a goal, this could make for a more interesting game for sure, because then France really has to show something, and maybe that will force Croatia in a real, into a real battle. Um, I'm afraid it will be a one nothing game, uh, but I do have a feeling it will not be a goalless draw. And then, if that was the case, this would be yeah the first World Cup since 1958 with only one goalless draw. The first goalless draw was in 1958, uh, <laughs> England versus Brazil, of all games. Um, before that, we never had a goalless throw, and now, yeah, it might be another. Uh, only one goal, goalless throw is a remarkable thing these days. So, yeah, but this is for the review of the World Cup. As I said, um, I don't want to count Croatia out. If you have, but if you have to ask me, France is the superior team uh, in every regard. Um, the last thing I wanted to say is I made this statement that Vida got the. Russian populace against them when you know the Russians could maybe support a Slavic uh, team but then you know uh, the, my Croatian colleague made me aware that uh, Russia always supported Serbia and Serbia and Croatia for some reason cannot get get on with each other at least not very well and therefore yeah was kind of a stupid comment on my side although I still think it was unnecessary yeah I think it's France's to lose. If you would have to pin me down, I would say one nothing, maybe two nothing for France. Um, I really would hope that uh, Croatia scores early, then we could get to see an interesting game. I really wish that both teams score, and it's not that you know uh, Croatia gets a late consolation goal. That's not what, what I mean. I mean really that one goes ahead, maybe there's an equalizer, and then one of the two teams scores. I mean, like a two-one. We really could use that in the World Cup final. We really haven't had that since 86 at least we had in 2006 we had a final where both teams scored and went to penalties but the Italian squad was gassed at that moment so they really wanted to go to penalties let me know what you think about the upcoming final how you see it going um, give me your perspective if you like this video uh, hit like and subscribe and I will talk to you soon if you enjoyed this video please hit like and subscribe to my channel if you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.